do a little video I've had it requested a few times now and I've always been meaning to do it on planning for a trip I'll just run through like some of the background things I do in relation to planning booking organizing the trip car prep uh, packing everything I need this trip we're doing is to Tassie it's a three-week trip coming up we're leaving in three days started planning the trip maybe about six months ago and then about two three months ago we decided we better go ahead and organize it being Tassie is off the mainland of Australia and you want to take your vehicle over you need to book a ferry so that you get over there on the spirit of Tasmania it takes you from Melbourne over to Devonport in Tasmania across the Bass Strait about a 10 hour ferry ride I think it is you have the option of booking a night trip through the night or a day trip we went for the night trips because that way you can just sleep on the boat like you get to Melbourne at dinner time get on the ferry sleep on the boat wake up you get off for breakfast time in Tassie that way you don't lose a day sitting on the ferry but it works out a little bit more expensive that way because you have to book accommodation on the ferry we booked a cabin which is $200 for a night each way if you do day trips you got to be at Melbourne sort of seven o'clock in the morning so you're probably gonna have to book accommodation in Melbourne anyway then you get to Tassie at dinner time so you're probably gonna have to book accommodation there for our return ferry tickets for myself and Kai for the Navara, which is a four-wheel drive with loaded roof racks it's classified as, was about $1,260 return. So that's the busiest time of year, night trips, accommodations, an adult and a child, and your car. So it's not too bad. That's sort of, you know, you can do it a lot cheaper uh, if you do day trips and do it sort of out of the busier time. You can get away with it for, you know, probably nearly half that. Step number one, we said we want to go to Tassie, we've booked our ferry, that's all done. Step number two I did was always like to get hard overview paper maps and information of where I'm going. Now for Tassie I got a HEMA Tassie map, which is an overview of the whole island, big map that has plenty of detail on it. It doesn't have all the small tracks and details, but has all the major roads, has, still has some four-wheel drive tracks on it, has like a lot of campsites marked. And then I bought a four-wheel drive tracks in Tasmania book, which basically has 30, 40, like a list of all different areas of the island and some tracks, sites, campsites you can go to. I'll use these when I'm traveling and then in the car I'll have a um, off-road electronic GPS. I use the VMS. Step number three in the time leading up to the trip now for me, two or three months knowing ahead is uh, a long time. A lot of my trips I will organize like two or three days out being a school teacher school holidays i know school holidays are coming up i know i want to go away but a lot of the time i can be like a day or two out i'll be like i could go south i could go north I could go west i just last minute i like to make it up as i go depending on weather but being that we had to book ferries and everything obviously we had to get in in advance had to get everything sorted for that Step number three, uh, I've had a bit of time this time, but is I start organizing some places to go, things to see, campsites. How I do that, look at maps, look at books. Um, I have a lot of knowledge of Tasmania. I've been there once, but a lot of knowledge I have is just from like things you see on the internet, articles, YouTube videos you watch, other people you've seen go on their Instagram. Like you start gathering all this information in your head. Like I know I want to do Balfour track, climb his track, back range track you know all those different places you start working them out talk to people uh, you do some research on the internet you can type into Google say like four-wheel drive tracks in Tasmania you get different articles and websites come up start putting together a bit of a list of places to do things to see that's about as far as I go in relation to planning my actual trip. dad and I looked at the map before like this big map of Tassie and we were just like yeah we'll start here we'll go there 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 and back up there and then we'll just make it up as we go from there um, my plans will change depending on weather depending on whether we like the place to stay there an extra night or two in relation to planning a trip i'll have a list of like tracks campsites maybe things i want to see and do sometimes that'll be quite a few sometimes that might be only one or two and then everything in between i'll just make up as i go i don't like to plan dates times itineraries like i just hate that i couldn't think of anything worse for me it's all about an adventure getting out there exploring making it up as i go you know you find new things to do and see on your way you go there that's one of the problems I have with organizing with people coming with me. People like people want to come with me, which is which is cool, but I'm like, well, I don't know where I'm going to be. I don't know when I'm going to be there. I don't know what time I'm going to be there. I don't even know I'm going to get there. So then people want to, you know, organize these things and my head just starts exploding trying to make plans because I just I, I don't I don't like that. All right, step number 4 
is a bit of a vehicle service and check. Now I have limited mechanical knowledge, but I still like to go over the car myself. There's a couple of different ways I do that with my limited knowledge. Plug your winch in, give it a quick wind in and out, make sure it's uh, working. There's nothing worse than getting out in the middle of nowhere and your winch doesn't work. I don't need to, because it's only a pretty new winch and I only used it a week ago, but get the whole thing out, clean it up, uh, get any mud and dirt you have off it and then wind it back in neatly under tension. Check it right over, make sure there's no knots, like dirty frayed bits, and it's all clean in there, ready to go. But winch check is always one thing I definitely do. Check over all your accessories, make sure nothing's loose or rattled loose. Check all your nuts and bolts are on there nice and tight. You know, check your lights, check your uh, radio, make your antenna, make sure that's all good. Check your awning, check your bolts on your awning, check your bolts on your roof rack. Go around and check your tyres, make sure there's no major damage to them, make sure they're all pumped up if you're going on a big road trip. You know, these 33 inch mud tyres, if you're doing a big trip down the highway, I like to get up around that 38, 40. Pop your bonnet up, have a look in the engine bay, pretend you know what you're looking at like me. Check all your basic things, uh, check your battery terminals, uh, drain and oil catch can if you have one, check your fuel's good, check your coolant, check your oil, Check your air filter, make sure it doesn't need cleaning or replacing, it's not too dirty. Just go around, just, I don't know, just like use your bit of common sense. Like I don't really know what I'm doing as I'm not a mechanic, but I know the basic things. And then just have a look around, like check your hoses, make sure they're nice and uh, soft. Check all your bolts, just have a good look around yourself. Go everything, make sure nothing's out of place, rattled, rattled loose, no pipes are like loose, there's no leaks. Oil's all full. I can see there's plenty of coolant in the coolant there. I can see the air feels nice and clean because I got the clear top uh, platinum mechanical and suspension air box. Uh, I can see, I can see in there, I can see my air filter. I don't need, to, don't need to take it off. Now that is a cleanable one. Now if it was dirty, I could clean it rather than replacing it. Top up your windscreen wiper, washer, fluid stuff, and fill it up with water. Do we know there's nothing major there from visual and feel that we can see going on? Now the next thing I like to do with my limited mechanical knowledge, this is the painful bit, uh, is crawl in underneath your car and just have a, once again, a look and feel over everything. Have a look and a feel of your steering arms, your CVs, make sure there's no like chips or anything in your boots. Check your suspension, like, you know, make sure there's no missing bolts, loose bolts, uh, no major components look like they're broken, there's no oil leaks, out of diff, some CVs, anything like that. You know, just have a go over yourself. That way you feel a little bit better as well, knowing that there's not something half falling apart underneath your car. Same thing in the rear too, get into it. Check like your sway bar, check your suspension, spare tire, it's all there, it's not broken. You know, check your muffler mounts, uh, check your tail shaft and front drive shaft, where they're called. You know, check your brake lines, just have a look, a think, some common sense, just look over everything. And if you don't know what tail shafts and diffs and CVs and everything else is, that's all good. Just get under there anyway and start looking and feeling things and make sure nothing looks broken. There's no oil coming out of anything, there's no loose nuts, just do the best you can. Depending on your mechanical knowledge will depend on the necessity of the next bit. I like to take it to a mechanic to have a look over it as well because my knowledge is limited. So I like to take it to a mechanic and that I know and trust and say, hey, going on a big trip, can you put it up on the hoist and check everything over for me? And that's another thing which I forgot to mention. It's a good idea to jack up each wheel and make sure there's not too much free, pain, free play in your wheels. Give them a rotate. You can't hear any wheel bearings or CVs on the way out. But that's easier for the mechanic to do on a hoist. One thing to keep in mind of that is to do it two weeks out from the trip at least, not not one or two days out from the trip because if something's broken, you can't get the parts in, you can't get it fixed in time. So get that done a couple of weeks ahead of a big trip. If you're very confident in all this stuff yourself, well, you probably don't need to do that, but someone like me, I do. Next thing I like to do is an inside car check over. First of all, I like to make sure my car's reasonably clean. It's not full of crap and rubbish, get it all cleaned out. And then check over all the bits and pieces I have in the car to make sure it's all stocked up. For example, uh, you know, you got your things like your deodorant, your bug spray, your sunscreen, you got plenty of batteries. Uh, you know, I keep batteries for my head torches, for my cameras, various things. In the front, check my center console here, make sure I got my winch controller, 
the wrench plug, got a couple of phone chargers, earplugs, I like to keep earplugs in the car, got earplugs, got a couple of pens in there, glove box, got another couple of torches, major one is the personal locating beacon, the PLB. You know, this is kind of going to be up to you, but have a think over your car, have a think of what you keep in here and what you need to keep up, keep stocked up. Check my first aid kit, I keep under the passenger seat, go through that, make sure you've got all your different pieces, you know, just simple things like band-aids, Panadol, Nurofen. I keep a lot of this stuff in my car all the time, which is good because I don't have to think about everything I have to put in. On the seat here, I got a tire repair kit. I got another bag full of like spare nuts and bolts and fluids and various things. It's all in there for, for should we need it. Check my toolkit. I keep under the seat. I, t I keep a toolkit in the back as well, but it's like a tool roll I keep under my seat. Just check you got your gloves, all your tools are there. Check your things like uh, make sure they're stocked up like a whole heap of zippy ties. I got a couple of rolls of tape in there, make sure they're all stocked up. I got another big packet of zippy ties here under my seat. I actually went out and bought a heap of zippy ties the other day because if I can't fix it with zippy ties and tape, all then I need help. So I need to make sure I got plenty of them. My fridge is plugged in and running all the time, so I know that's working, but make sure it's working, give that a clean out. Now this blue box, I keep a lot of tools, recovery gear, all those things. As I said, they're always in there, but just a quick go through, make sure they're all there, you got everything you need. I actually went to Bunnings this morning, I need a few more straps. Um, I just use these sorts of straps to like tie things down on the roof, tie my swag, chainsaw, etc. I bought some fire starters as well, because it's cold and wet in Tassie. These really help getting the fire going, should you should be struggling. I'll just grab a few things out here just for a bit of an idea, you know. Got my gas cooker. This is actually a new thing I recently set up. Um, a bag. And in this bag, which I'm now carrying, is some Makita drill gear. So I've got two batteries. Make sure your batteries are topped up. Battery charger. I've got a cordless grinder with some spare blades. Now that's the main reason for that is if I break a CV out of the bush I can grind it off and get out of there in two wheel drive hopefully. Down the track I will carry, I will look at carrying a spare CV um, and also learning how to replace a CV but for the moment at least I know I can grind it off and two wheel drive my car rather than being stuck somewhere with a jam CV. Uh, this is another thing I carry in this kit which is a, what's this, NOCO GB70 battery starter. So I can jump start my car, I think it's like 15 times if I have a flat battery out the bush. So making sure, you know, all your electronic stuff's charged up. I charged this up yesterday. This has got like USB points on it for charging phones and that too, should you need to. The other major thing to normally check, which got in here is the recovery kit. Have a go, have a look through your recovery kit. Recovery kit, make sure it's all there, none of it's broken, too dirty, needs a wash. You know, I got all my soft shackles, I got my, I'm not going to get it all out, but got my winch extension, I got my bridle, I got my snatch rope, uh, I got my snatch ring, I got everything in there. And then in the back here, you know, just check all your bits and pieces. I got newspaper for starting fire, I got my axe, got my silky handsaw, tree trunk protector, I got plenty of ropes and that for tying things on in the sand, got gloves, got bottle jack. I uh, got my winch controller, should my Bluetooth stop working, got my air compressor. Check all your gear, make sure it's all there, it's all in order, you got it all. Um, in this box I keep all my camp cookware kitchen gear, so make sure that's all in there. You've got everything stocked up, you know, i got a new set of bin bags, new paper towel, new, co new cooking oils. Uh, make sure I've got heaps of gas canisters for my cooking, you know, make sure you think through, you've got everything topped up, ready to go, being I'm going to be on the road for nearly a month. The less trips you do to the shops when you're away, the better it is. You don't want to have to make special trips to towns to try and find things you forgot. Obvious things, like I still say anyway, water, I've got 40 litres of water here, spread across three, three jerry cans, containers, you know, that's just a safety thing, making sure you've got plenty of water with you. Now once you've gone through all your gear, make a list and go shopping of what you need. Now as I said, I already kind of did this a few days ago. I've been to the shops a couple of times. Like I, need, I knew I needed some more tie down ropes, so I got them. I got the fire stars. I went to Coles. I got like uh, I got some new cling wrap, paper towels, all your little bits and pieces to top this up. I got new batteries for in the car. Make sure all your background base gear is all there, stocked up, ready to go, and then you can move into things like 
clothes, food, and you know, whatever else you want to take camping. Now I'm going to set up my new chainsaw bag because I haven't done that yet. So I did carry my chainsaw in a hard plastic case, but I've changed over to this crash pad chainsaw bag. It's like it's PVC, it's waterproof, it's a little bit lighter. Um, it'll be easier to tie down on the roof as well and kind of easier to carry with, with good handles. The problem I found the hard one was even when you tied it down as hard as you could, it'd still slide around on the roof rack. So I'm going to repack the chainsaw into this and check things over like chainsaw oil, fuel, chainsaw blades are sharp, all those bits and pieces. Now this, yeah, this has been sharpened. I sharpened this a couple weeks ago and I haven't used it since, so that's all good. If you haven't used a chainsaw in a while, it's always good to give it a quick run too. Now I don't have enough fuel, so I'm going to have to go to the shop and get some more fuel. I carry about one litre of spare fuel with me. So what I do is I start a camping shopping list on my phone of things I need to do, rather than trying to remember it all in your head. So I jump in this blue box and check, um, this is kind of another thing where I keep a few bits and pieces. I keep things in here that I carry day to day, so I can get rid of them and then make sure I might put all my camping gear in there. But you know, make sure things in there. I've got the Iron Man sidewall in there. Got like a fan, a little fan for the swag if it gets really hot. Got spare gas canisters. I got toilet paper in there. I got pegs. We're on a big trip. I need to do some washing. You know, I carry of quite a bit of gear. I love four wheel driving camping. I do a lot of it. So I like to have, you know, all the things you need. A lot of it I do on my own remote as well. So, you know, I do, I've built up a lot of gear over time that could save me out there. You know, things like your cordless grinder, your car jump start, all those bits and pieces. But, you know, depending on how much you do, you don't need as much gear as I have. And, you know, if you're sticking to more the main tourist areas and that, where there's help around, you know, you don't need all your tools and everything probably as much either. You know, depending on what sort of full driving, if you're doing full driving, you don't need as much recovery gear as I need. But, you know, it's good to carry, you know, a few basic bits and pieces. The next thing I like to do is come to food, food prep. Now, I find that I can be sufficient for about 10 days. We're away for nearly a month now, so obviously I'm going to have to do a few shops, but I still like to get that initial 10-day plan. One thing to keep in mind with Taz is you can't take fresh fruit and veg over on the ferry. So that kind of restricts meal planning a little bit. What I'll do, write down a list of maybe four or five meals and then pack everything I need for them, do a shopping list, go to the shops, get the extra bits and pieces, put it all in there. I like to keep lots of snacks as well. If you're ever traveling with a child, you'll know that they never ever stop eating food. Kai, it's about double the food when we're away. So I'm gonna get all my food sorted now, and that way I can go to the shops tomorrow and write a list and get everything else that I need. When it comes to meal planning, camping, I like to keep it simple. I'm not really out there to make extravagant meals and test new recipe ideas. So, got the tacos. I'll do like spaghetti bolognese one night uh, with milks. I keep like these sorts of milks rather than filling up your fridge with cold, fresh milks. Just about cleared my pantry out <laughs> filling this up. So far, we got stuff to make Mexican curry. Spaghetti bolognese, or I can do toasted sandwiches a couple of nights, you know, they're sort of, you know, if I cook a meal, it'll be enough for a couple of nights, you know, there's already like over a week's worth of meals once I get the fresh stuff to go with it. Rice cakes are always a good one for lunch, like just peanut butter and honey rice cakes or avocado or something. Yeah, with my food, I just kind of keep it in a couple of boxes, one with all like the base for meals, cooking and that, and then like a big snack box as well. We're up to our final afternoon slash day of pack up. We're leaving tomorrow. Everything's all in bits and pieces now as I start doing the loading everything up. I've been to the shops and done all my grocery shopping. I got all filled up both my boxes with snacks and all meals and everything uh, I can. As I said, I couldn't really get much fresh fruit or veggies because you can't take it over on the ferry. So once we get there, I'll have to do like a fresh fruit and veggie shop on the day we get there. Got a last minute addition to the dual battery system from Luke at Drifter. It's the newest, latest, greatest solar panel technology from Safari Global. Um, so I put in a Victron solar connector thing in behind the seat there, the dual battery system. And then it's got an Anderson plug which comes feeds in front behind the back seat and then I can lay it out on this solar plan panel so I'm here testing it out now obviously it's 80 percent in the shade so it's not working real well at the moment but it's still uh, getting in energy now. We're going to use that at camp because I found when we were on our last trip 
that when I was at camp charging on my camera gear, running my fridge, my dual batch, my dual batch system was just running down too quick, just with the 120 amp AGM deep cycle battery. The good thing about this company is it all runs off your phone here on an app. Uh, so it gives you like how much solar you got going in, got your uh, battery voltage, it's got everything on there. Obviously it's, <laughs> it's a 250 watt solar panel, but obviously it's got not much going in there, as I said, because it's in the shade, but it's still giving a little bit of trickle charge. Another thing is I went out and bought two hard drives. So I've got one, the main one for all my footage and I'm gonna start backing it all up now as well. We're gonna do my roof rack now. I like to get this done in the early stages, get my swag, recovery trucks and chainsaw up here. I just use like these tie down straps, plus some hockey straps as well. I got crap here everywhere. I gotta get all my stuff put up here. But actually, before I get my stuff, what I like to do is pre lay everything out so I can put it on and tie it up rather than putting everything down there and then trying to get your hands in underneath for the nightmare. I like to put three straps on these big double, double swags, I just don't really trust to. The recovery tracks I just tie down as well. I don't, you can get proper mounting systems for them, but I don't have one of them, but I probably should get one. Start throwing some things in the car. Food box one. Also, with the swag up on the roof, one thing I do is I pre pack all my bedding in there. So I got my crash pad, we got the crash pad swag with the crash pad double sleeping bag in there, my sheets and everything. I don't put my pillows in there, but that way it's all in there ready to go. So when you roll it out, your bedding's all set up and saves shoving it in the car somewhere. Food box number two table <clears throat> doesn't fit cool solar blanket fly pit oh. with a plug for the solar blanket it's an anderson plug that runs up out the top of the back seat and then i'll just wrap around the headrest here and then i can just send it out any which direction i want when i want to plug the solar in Is it working? Yeah, it's on. Is it like usable? Yeah, it's on, it's hot. Wow. Well, ready to go. Go do something. <laughs> it's just like spasm. Okay. Very history. This is the most important part of the trip preparation, making sure Kayla's hair straightener works on the new Yeah, because look at what my hair looks like. Oh, you gotta get it right. The next thing I've done is I ended up giving my fridge a bit of a clean out. It's pretty dirty and getting everything out and then repacking it all. It's always, fridge is always space is a bit precious, like you're always a little bit limited. So it's a bit of a jigsaw trying to make sure it's all in there nice and neat and perfect to fit everything in. This fridge just lives in the back of my ute all the time and I've yet to break it through all weather conditions, rain, hail, storms, sunshine, everything. Keep a case on it makes a big difference, but this case is shredded to pieces. But what I do now, is I put like a towel over it for extra sun protection just to keep the heat out of it and I put a hockey strap over it otherwise everything just blows everywhere while you're going down the road. Final morning of packing now, I finished up last night, I couldn't be bothered doing anymore. Um, I did a, packed all my clothes inside last night, got them all in bags here. I've got these new crash pad like satchel bag things, it's pretty good. So I've got like all Kai's undies and socks and that in one bag and then all his shirts and shorts and jumpers in another bag. And they've also got this crash pad um, one which has got all my stuff in it. Now the good thing about this one is it has like a PVC lining inside so it's waterproof. That way I can leave it in the back of the ute and if it rains it's not the end of the world because it'll stay dry. But yeah, I try and take enough clothes to last us for about 10 days. And then, you know, obviously we're going to have to go to a couple of laundry mats or caravan parks or whatever to do washing on the trip one last thing i just remembered was the uh, like a ground mat it's just cheap adventure kings one but lay it out and you can fit both swags on it that way if you're on like a real dirty area or sand it just keeps the things not so dirty keeps a bit cleaner on your swags and on your feet i've got a whole whole bag full of toys and games and books and everything coloring in for Clyde's feet here i've got the laptop and charger so we can just plug that in to the uh, inverter there, got the inverter controls there so he can just turn it on. When we're on the highways, I normally let him watch like one or two movies a day when we're on the highway all day. Got some, I ended up putting the snow peak fire pit in the back here because it was rattling around too much in the car, but I might try and obviously find somewhere better for it. I got the crash pad bag there. Um, 
Yeah, I'm just going everything in my head. We got all our cooking gear, we got lots of food, we got our swag, all our bedding, pillows, got the chainsaw, recovery tracks. We already did a couple of days couple of days ago we did the full check over we got all our tools bits and pieces all recovery gear um, got all our kitchen we got 40 liters of water fridge has been cleaned and repacked um, yeah I think we're just about ready to go it's a little bit hard to film this video while I'm already trying to run around and pack for a nearly a month on the road that's why I haven't filmed these videos before because you're trying to do so much and you're trying to film a video as well but yeah I'm sure I forgot bits and pieces that I do but you get a bit of a general idea of all the pre-checks with the car and all the organizing and everything and then all the last minute mad rush to get everything in the car as we go but yeah that's a bit of an idea of trip preparation i guess and it's not the perfect way or everything you need to do but it's just some of the things and that that i do when i'm preparing for a trip and how i get organized we've got our maps in the car as well don't definitely don't forget them all our tassie maps and books i think we're good to go That's why you have a bull bar and rear bar, so you don't break it. I'm like... <laughs> I literally was having like a panic attack just watching that. I was like... <laughs> <laughs> that don't feel good. It doesn't look good. I was going to say, you might have been saying it doesn't look good. <laughs> um, if it's going up, I should be right. Left hand down a little bit. <laughs> 